Hello plant friends! If you're new to this channel, my name is Jimmy. I'm a doctor and tropical plant hobbyist in LA. I make videos about my plants, other people's plants, and plants, plants, plants. So I recently had the privilege of visiting Brandon's place. He's the owner of the eBay store Modern Roots, uh, Roots with a Z. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> my name is Brandon. basically came from a place where they were neglected I guess is the best way to put it. Ah, got it. Yeah, they were in like full sun, some yeah. of them, and uh, so they've been, been here for some time and, and dropped a lot of the bad leaves, and uh, they've got some new growth coming yeah. in, so they're starting to get some really nice form. These reddish leaves are the newer the newer leaves. Yeah, so it's kind of cool how they come out real dark like that, yep. and then and they change. the root systems are really large and healthy. Uh, they just don't have a whole lot of leaves. Like you yeah. can see this one here is kind of like a nice mother plant. Yeah, that's quite a trunk. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if it had kept all its leaves, this thing would be, you know, yeah. quite the conversation piece. As you see, Brandon uh, grows his in soil outside in sort of like a, a shaded area. I grow mine in moss indoors in, I would consider it a, a low light situation very easy going regarding light requirement humidity requirement and substrate so you know very easy plant to grow Love these. Yeah, these yeah. are really cool because these are like, I guess you would say regular form. Yeah, the, this is the, the narrow. Okay, form. and then this is round form? No, I think these are all, I think these I think are all, all the probably same. narrow. Or I mean, uh, yeah, there's like a round form that's a little bit beefier is kind of what I would call it. It's hard to say, it's like we were say. saying, until they reach maturity, yep. you kind yeah. of guess it's sometimes. Just a guess. But yeah, this one has really nice form to it. Yeah, that's a really good one. I always up. love it when you find a fenestrate like a... One? obliqua like looking <laughs> thing it's still attached and you're like whoa yeah. that's so delicate right there it's hard for me to say anything bad about the monstera addisonii i love plants that vine and i love leaves with holes so th that plant really really speaks to me extremely easy to grow i think that they're getting common enough that the price has gone down so i would consider them pretty affordable for you know for rare tropical house plants <laughs> No, these are huge. Yeah, yeah really nice Pelia. Yeah. This is uh it's still one of my favorite plants and I keep telling people that like it's it's so unique. It's yeah. super common now, but it was rare at some point. Very easy to take care of care of. Yeah. Um, you know, the requirements are very minimal. Yeah, and, and it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks awesome. When it gets yeah. a nice form and it just has that spherical yep. look to it. Yeah. I think people think it has to be rare or expensive to be really, really cool, but this plant is really, really cool and I recommend this to like everyone. You know, yeah. And, and you can propagate it, it grows, it has little babies. Absolutely. Um, like yeah. if you take your average plant and you just get it to a really nice, healthy, mature form. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it would be babies, like, just as time. admirable, I'm sure. Yeah. So the Pilea peppermoides, I absolutely love this plant. I, I think I rave about it every single chance I get. It's still one of my favorite plants in my collection. And it's, you know, it, it it's just so unique, so fun, and, and so easy. It's, you know, the plant just grows by itself. So the last plant that we're going to talk about in this episode is the philodendron pink congo for those of you who haven't been keeping up with the plant drama um, it's been recently discovered in the last i would say in the last few months that as you know they were growing or propagating in nurseries a chemical was added and that's the reason why their leaves are pink so here's what brandon's thoughts are regarding it and then i'll make some comments at the end what is these these are your oh these bongos. are the 
the notorious pink Congos. <laughs> everybody loved, and now everybody maybe hates, yeah. not so much love. Yeah. This one is this reverting? This no, this leaf came out like this, right? Yeah. So I think there might be a lot of confusion about the whole, I you know, reverting thing yeah, with pink yeah, Congos. Yeah. The thing with the Congos is that the leaves that are pink stay pink, and the new leaves come out greener. And yeah, greener. and so I mean, honestly, I can see the whole chemical inducing and it, it, I've seen weird things with this plant like I've yeah. seen all different ways like to where um, they come pink and they go green yeah they come pink and then they stay like this one they're all staying pink yeah, yeah. you know yeah. a little funky these one they're kind of mostly turned green this one looks nice and healthy back here here is probably what everybody is super afraid of and what just kind of ruined everything so special about these plants is here's one that seems to oh, have reverted yeah this one yeah you can see these new leaves are green yeah i don't i don't hate the pink congo yeah uh, it's still i mean it's still a beautiful plant while it it's while still it's very there. interesting to me because yeah. you know everybody talks about it reverting yeah but here's what everybody doesn't seem to understand that this it's not like it turns into a green Congo. It doesn't, no, it's not, a, it's not a reverting. It's more of like, just like aging out of the pinkness. Yeah, really what, so it's its it own is. little plant. It just yeah. kind of has a little, a shorter life, I guess yes. you would yeah. say. Yeah. So I really don't have a very strong dislike of the pink Congo as, as much as some people do. Think about all of the plants or plant-related things that we buy that you know, we keep for just a relatively short time, right? Flowers, roses, orchids, right? Orchids, even though they can uh, last a long time after they bloom or they can rebloom under the right conditions, a lot of people buy orchids purely just, you know, for that one time bloom to, to appreciate their beauty. So we think about the pink Congo in that aspect, um, you know, it's, it's also a plant that's transient and the it's very beautiful, uh, but you know that beauty is you know is is transient, and we should appreciate it while while it's still there. I think in the U.S. at its peak, a small pink Congo would sell for about I'd say up to like 180 U.S. dollars, which which is a lot for a plant that you know you can that you know won't retain its color i think the biggest problem that i have with the pink congo is probably the lack of transparency in the growth uh process or in advertising the plant i think a lot of people who are selling the plant really didn't know anything about it so you know that's that's that but i think more transparency from the source the original nurseries who were uh, distributing it I think that would have been better for the plant community and I think less people would have been angry if, if they knew so that's gonna be it for this episode if you want more content like this or there's other things that you want to see definitely comment below um, that would be great and till next time <laughs> happy planting <laughs>